Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm Ramsey personality George Camel, joined by the illustrious Rachel Cruz, who also is my co-host on Smart Money Happy Hour. That's right. Here we are together, so answering your questions, America. It's a very different show. We're very serious, very professional on the show, and then we have a good time on Smart Money Happy Hour. Just dishing, just talking like us old girl, old gals. But this show is very different. You call in with your questions, and we will do our best to give you sage advice. And that comes from Rachel. So <laughs> 888-825-5225 is the number to call. And Talon, I believe is how I say it, is in Provo, Utah. Talon, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Uh, yeah. So I am currently... Working on baby step two, that should be end up, that should, or baby step, I'm finishing baby step one, should be finishing that by the end of the month. I'm kind of planning a roadmap for baby step two on paying off all my debts. Um, and looking on paper, I'm seeing one of my cars that I have is uh, kind of ugly on paper and looking at the value of it, I'm upside down a little bit on it. Um, and I'm wondering if it would be worth um, taking out a loan on my 401k to pay down what I'm upside down in it and then to sell it from there. Well, short answer. You no. want to take that one, George? <laughs> I, I don't like this plan and we'll, we'll talk about why. Um, what is the car worth and what do you owe on it? So I currently owe 26, uh, five on it. And the, at least the Kelly Blue Book value from what I've been seeing. It ranges from um, 18 to 21 and looking at similar cars on the market and, it, you know, on different classified ads and, and that stuff like that. Um, I'm seeing like 20, about, about around 20. Okay. So you're about six grand underwater. How much money do you have in the yep. bank, if anything? I have very little. Okay. And what's your income? Uh, I currently make uh, average... Um, 65 a year. Okay, and it's just you? on how much overtime is given to me. What is, was that? Are you single? It's just you? I'm I'm married and have two kids. Okay, and is is your spouse working outside the home? No, she, we're, we're on a single income. Okay. Is she able to? Uh, she could, but we've kind of decided between the, tweet, between the uh, two of us that she's going to stay home with the kids. Okay. Uh, what other debt do you guys have, Talon? Uh, I ha we have uh, her car, um, and then we have which is how much student loans, which is uh, twenty four thousand, and we're right on track on hers. Like the uh, car's worth twenty four. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, and then how much student loan debt? Uh, we have um, six grand. Six thousand. Yep. Okay. That uh, helps us. Okay, so back to the 401k loan situation. Okay. The reason you don't want to do that, the only time we would tell people, hey, tap into that 401k is in case of emergency, and by that I mean a foreclosure or bankruptcy, but never just to pay off debt to help you get out of this bind. And there's okay. two reasons. One, you're going to uh, decimate all of the future growth of that money. And so if you take out a $5,000 loan, even if you're going to pay it back over time, uh, the possibility of that money growing for you in that time will hurt your brain to see compounded growth over the next few decades. And number two, you're going to pay taxes and penalties on that money, which means you're taking a you know, 30, 35% hit just to get out of this mm -hmm. debt. So I'd rather see you, see you use future income to get out of this mess versus trying to rob Peter to pay Paul. Yep. And I'll say this, Talon, you know, you guys are well over you're getting close to your annual income and car debt i mean you guys are right at that fifty thousand dollar mark of car debt and and our recommendation is always not to have cars worth anything on wheels we say engines and wheels more than half of your annual income and so you guys are beyond that talent and so um you know if 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 i woke up in your shoes honestly you got two kids at home you have a wife um your family. And I'm like, I think I just would want some relief. And so if I were you, I would, I would look at selling both of these cars. You'll have, you'll have to take out a small loan for the difference and a small loan just to get, you know, to buy to be able to buy another vehicle. But, 
Um, mm-hmm. I would just want some relief from this. And the amount of stress that you're probably carrying over a car, yeah, it's not worth it. Do you know what I mean? And you guys can go yeah. get a great car again. Um, not, you know, it's not that you guys can never drive a, a great car, but I mean, this is a lot right. of your income that is that is wrapped up in car payments right now. I mean, how how much how much is your car payment? How much is her car payment a month? I'm just curious. So mine is about five eighty seven. Okay, and hers is five hundred. Okay, so over a thousand bucks we get freed over eleven hundred dollars. Yeah. Yes, and then it, I mean, yeah. if you think about it, Talon, like you do that, and yeah, you'll have a small loan, but that means I mean that that frees up money to be out of completely out of debt in probably seven months and then be able to save an emergency fund. You have no money in the bank right now. And so that's stressful. I mean, you guys are one life event or one decision away of this going spiraling down real quick and and not having the option of like, should we sell or not these cars? We're going to have to, to be able to do X, Y, and Z if you don't get a paycheck in right before they get repoed. Right. I mean like that, that's, and I don't, I'm not trying to like base all these decisions off of fear, but it's just the reality right. of where y'all are. And you're so normal talent. Like, like this is what everyone does. It's what everyone does, but everyone you're is You're not is even stressed. special according to Rachel Cruz. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. But like, it's just not worth the stress. And as you're, and you know, and I have three kids at home and I'm like, and just even the stress your wife probably feels of like, man, you know, we don't have money in the bank. Like we don't have a lot saved. So just the entire situation talent, I would flip it on its head. I would mm-hmm. probably just sell the cars and just just for the sense of a radical change in your life, it'll free you guys yeah. up emotionally, financially, and then reevaluate and be like, all right, what you know, we want to buy something else, so let's let's look at replacing it here in the next year. You know what I mean? Like you you'll have the option to do that soon, right. but just for the moment of relief, yeah. I, that's so almost. You've what got I would a few do. decisions to make. So this is how it would play out, Talon. You would go to your local credit union. You'd get a loan for fifteen k. And that would cover your underwater portion and give you guys a little bit of money to get some beater cars. We're talking you get a $4,000 car, she gets a $5,000 car, and the other six will get covered the underwater portion. Get it? Okay. So then you have these beater cars. You still have her car you could sell, freeing up that payment at that point. And I would encourage you to do both. Because here's the other side of the coin. It's either this or she's got to get to work and bring an income. I mean, or you, staying or at home is a luxury. Or at this you're going to be able to work extra. Or you're going to take yeah. on two jobs. Yeah. And to bring your income up to 80, 90 grand. Yeah. Because by April, you guys will have your student loans, you know, paid off. And then you'll have that $15,000 loan. Uh, and just working, and again, working extra, cutting lifestyle, all of it. And I would, I would want to pay that off in nine months. You know what I mean? Like you look up next Christmas. You guys would be in a totally, totally different financial situation. Yeah, so. this is like triple bypass surgery is what you're about to go through, but you're going to have some big relief it. on the other side, man. Relief so. and sleep. You'll have peace. I'm going to give you three months of our budgeting app, Every Dollar Premium, to help you guys make a plan for all of this money because I want you to call back and celebrate with us when you're debt free. Thanks so much for the call. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Rachel Cruz this hour. This is a show for you, about you, and the number to call is 888-825-5225. 
Now, as I mentioned, I'm uh, co-hosting with my friend Rachel Cruz, and we also co-host Smart Money Happy Hour, which is one of the hottest shows on the Ramsey Network. And we have a good time. I'll Uh, just say that. Why would? Why do you think that is? Here's my theory. Okay. I think people want a lighthearted, casual conversation, easy listening, where they can laugh, and then they accidentally learn something. Oh, that's good. That's like the that. way I see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you're kind of eavesdropping in a conversation with friends. You're yes. part of the happy hour. I don't know if that. you wish that we were your friends. That's I, That would be <laughs> ideal. Rachel, obviously. That's been I Rachel's vibe. Be, I want to be your friend. Let's just say that. I'm not accepting applications for new friends right now. I have a newborn, <laughs> Rachel. Priorities. But one of our episodes that we did that became one of our highest ones. Um, 113,000 views. Expl- and this is what it was called. Explaining our most hated financial advice. And for some reason, people really, the haters showed up as, as well as the fans. Yes. So we're going to go through that. You know, people, yeah. people do not like us sometimes. And we're going to talk about it. First it was up. also cathartic for me. Can I be honest? It felt good. To just like have my rebuttals. Oh, yeah. My retorts. Yeah, my retorts. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you go to that first one, George. This is, this is very you. Thank you. I don't know if that's a compliment, but I'll take it. <laughs> the first one that we say is crypto is a terrible way to invest and spend your money. We say it and all the crypto. I'm going to say dudes. It's not a lot. I just don't feel like a lot of the women I haven't ran into so, a lot of women. A lot of women don't get well, I think mad it's because the women, way the guys do. The guys are like nuts. Women use something called logic a lot. <laughs> Whereas guys are like, it's like a flex. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. Crypto. Now, you know, women have girl math. And so they're not innocent That's true. Here. That's true. We but can yeah, justify some spending. Crypto, from the very beginning, I was just like scratching my head about crypto. And I thought, well, maybe I'm not dumb enough to understand. And the more I looked into it, the stupider it got. <laughs> and now on the other side of it, we kind of all know it was a farce. It's just not good. Y'all. And the reason is, I'll give you a real reason. Crypto is not based in anything. It's just based on hype. When you even buy a single share of a company... You're hoping that the company produces more profit and revenue, whereas crypto is just, I made a coin. This is the coolest, hottest coin. Come get my coin. And so it's very multi-level marketing vibes. And so I always joke that crypto is just Mary Kay for young men for that reason, <laughs> which no offense to the Mary Kay ladies, okay? There are some, some yeah, diehard Mary Kay They're ladies. They're out there, so that's okay, that. The second thing people just, yeah, they don't care for us on. Uh, you shouldn't use credit cards. Ooh. We talk about this a lot. That one lot increasingly of, is controversial. Yeah. And people, you know, it's because the points and the airline miles, what they get from it, they claim is, is worth it. Um, but when you sit in our seat, we talk to so many people where credit cards are not a blessing. It's not a thing that has helped people. It's actually gotten people into a lot of trouble and they end up being in a financial position where the credit card company is winning and they're not winning and we want you to win and then you can go through all the you know the amount of stuff that doesn't work when it comes to the points and the airline miles playing the game you can go through the moral side door of they get to you get these points and you get these this cash back and you get the airline miles and everything because other people are not paying off their cards banks make their money off of interest and so they're making all this money off of people that are struggling and then you know, reaping the benefits. So it's like, it's just a gross, it's, it's a icky. gross thing all the way around to me. And I'm like, if you have a debit card, like just pay for everything in the present and then go pay for your Southwest flight. Like just save just up and pay for and it. budget and save up. It's so much more freeing. And statistically what you save by not paying on a credit card in turn could actually help you have hundreds of dollars throughout the year to spend on an airline yes. ticket that you pay for. And I'm going to call out all the Ramsey fans who won't, they're, they're what we call ish, where they go, I did everything, but I still have my credit card. I pay it off every month, Rachel, so I'm fine. And I've convinced a whole bunch of people to try a 30-day credit card challenge where they oh, just I saw this, put it in a block of ice and we're starting to get the results. And there was an interesting – someone just said this. I thought it was interesting. They said, a few months ago, I decided to ditch the Apple card and just use the money I have. I just wanted to try it out. They said, I've definitely seen a noticeable reduction in my spending and I've created more margin in my budget for savings. And they said, it's just the little things. There's something about checking my balance, inst- seeing it instantly go down after a purchase that really worked to op- optimize my spending. I go out to lunch less. I buy less extra stuff at the grocery store. You just make more intentional decisions. And when so it's your money and you Even if that's it. you, you're the perfect spender, as I call them. Yeah. You're still spending more than you would have. It's true. All right. Next. Uh, next. Save $1,000 emergency funds. People are like, oh, inflation, yeah. 2023. This is the same advice y'all gave in 1993, you know. Shouldn't it change with 
expenses being higher and things being more expensive. Mm, that's a big one. And funny enough, when Dave came up with this principle, baby step one, 30 years ago, $1,000 wasn't enough back then to get the new HVAC system and cover the big life emergencies. Yeah. And so the principle of it is it's meant to be a starter emergency fund. It's, Dave started this because people were trying to get out of debt, but they'd have these little ankle biters that would knock them back and knock them back. And so it's the goal is to cover the ankle biters. If you have a big emergency... Number one, we want you to have good insurance in place to cover some of that, the health stuff. Yeah. And number two, you pause the baby steps, you save up fast, sell stuff, whatever you need to do to cover the expense. Most of these emergencies are not the money's due today or else the right. house is getting foreclosed on. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so yeah, the thousand dollars, it's meant to be a quick step to 30 days or less because we want you to get traction and so much of personal finance is, is behavior change. And for some people, they can't even cover a $400 emergency in cash. Yeah. Four out of 10 people have zero in savings. That's right. So. We found. So even a thousand dollars may feel like an uphill battle, but when you do it quickly and you have it and you can move on to paying off debt, that that's what it's there for. It's for the quick win. It's for the ankle biter stuff that comes up in order to pay off debt, which leads us to number four, George, pay off your debt, smallest amount to largest Ooh. amount, regardless of interest rates. This is and where the math nerds show up. All the math nerds are like, why in the heck would you not pay off the 25% credit card? Versus They're like, well, the- you'll save $300 in interest, Rachel, if you pay off the highest interest first. That's so dumb. And I'm like... Or you could have paid zero in interest if you never went into debt. So why are we having this theoretical discussion? Yeah, It's but, so silly. But the reason we do it, again, is what I was saying earlier, is, is these quick wins. And when you pay off that smallest debt, even if it's a $400 credit card bill that's been just like laying around, right? You pay it off, you start to actually win. And you start to feel like, oh my gosh, I can do this. And so that's it's a powerful motivator. Yeah, getting out of debt is way more about hope and momentum and progress than it is about mathematical interest. And we've done the math. The amount is negligible about how much you're really going to save right. by doing the avalanche. And I just have not seen people come in droves saying, Rachel, I did the debt avalanche, and that's why we got out of debt. It's likely you'll stay in debt longer or give up or fall off the wagon if you don't see that progress yep. fast. All right. Last but not least, uh, if crypto was yours, George, I feel like this, this is, is mine. <sighs> Married couples to combine accounts. <sighs> you would think... That I just told you. You got three heads, Rachel, to, telling us to do that. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't even, I mean, it, it, like, people get so mad. My last two. Where, where's the on, anger coming on from? On Instagram, George, my, my, the last two reels I've done about this, over like 3 million views each. And all in the comments, they're like, this woman is, says a woman, says a woman. Says I, a woman. That's what a lot of them say. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Can I go what? out on a limb and say those guys are single? <laughs> Yes. She's going to say like, that out loud. Oh, man. People get pissed about this. Well, they see joint bank accounts as she's going to take you to the cleaners. That's the very toxic mentality yes. that some guys I, out there and have. And I always have the asterisk, you guys. And, and on the show, we do this. And we've actually had callers that call in with situations and we tell them the opposite of this advice. If there's an abuse situation, if there's an addiction that's not being addressed, like if there are things that you have to do to keep yourself safe Absolutely. Like, absolutely. I am not against that. But if you're just the married couple out there, both bringing in an income, but she, My pay, money and her money. she pays these bills, I pay these, you go on vacation, they get the hotel, you get the food. I mean, you're roommates. You are acting like you're roommates. And it's never just about the money. It's never just about the account. It's the idea that you actually don't see yourself fully as a team and don't fully trust your spouse. And if that is you, then you need to ask like, okay, why is that? Because there's probably going to be other issues going on that are going to come up in other parts of your marriage. So mm. we can go on and on about Preach, this, y'all. But I'm telling you, people that win with money when you're married, you see yourself as a team. You win faster. And I think you, and your, and your marriage becomes better. So many people have stood on the stage, George, to scream they're debt free. And they talk yeah. about how much, how unified they are. Well, it's transparency, as a accountability, communication, you know, all the hallmarks of a great marriage. Be married, be a, be a team. So, anyways, they, there you go. Yeah, that is our most hated financial advice. And haters we love gonna it. hate. You're only fueling us. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, 
you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. Derek is up next in Minnesota. Derek, welcome to the show. Derek, are you with us? Hey, guys, how are you doing? We're doing yeah, well. Here. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, so my question is, is I qualify for a VA home loan. I'm in college right now, so I'm not looking at buying a house, but probably in a couple of years once I graduate, I'm looking for it. Okay. And I'm wondering what the advantage of your 15 conventional loan versus a VA home loan would be. Cool. Okay. So talk to us about this home purchase. Are you out of debt? Are you, do you have an emergency fund? How far away are you from this decision? Uh, well, I got, I got about a year and a half until I graduate. I have no debt. I'll have a fully funded emergency, emergency fund by that point. And I already have a job offer afterwards, which would be roughly about $75,000 a year. Awesome. Way That's to go, great. man. Yeah. Crushing. And thank you for your service as well. So are you a veteran yourself? Yeah, I'm a vet, I'm a vet myself. I just, just got out of the Army a month ago. Oh, oh wow. Amazing. Very cool. Okay, so let's talk through the VA loan versus the 15-year. So the 15-year loan is as conventional as it gets. So there's not going to be any special fees or anything like that. There's a set fixed interest rate, and it's a 15-year term, and it's that simple. The VA loan, uh, there's virtually no down payment. So the reason people find the VA loans attractive is you can get in this thing with 0% down. The problem mm -hmm. with that is that means broke people can get into a house, which can make them broker because they have no equity. And if the market shifts like it has been, they could be underwater on this house with too big of a payment on top of other fees. And so the VA loan does have an extra fee called a funding fee, which will add one and a quarter percent up to a little over 3% of the loan amount, which will make your overall payments and your interest higher. And there's also a lot of property requirements that you have to look into. So there are some restrictions there. And uh, do you have any service-connected disabilities? Uh, just a little bit, but nothing, nothing that affects my job. I just get a just get 10% for, for that, so... Okay. It's not too much. There are situations where if your disability rating is high enough, that funding fee can be waived, which can make this a decent option. But those circumstances are very unique. And so if I'm in your shoes, if you're going, hey, the 15-year is crazy unaffordable, that would make me question if you're ready to buy a home. Gotcha. So I would want yeah, you to have a good down payment before you jump into yeah, this. Yeah, overall, Derek, the VA home loans usually are just more expensive because of all the fees and everything. And then just like George said... It doesn't require much of a down payment, and we always say somewhere between five uh, to twenty percent down. Um, so again, th those are the those are the big differences. So if I were you, I probably would just go with the conventional fifteen percent uh, or fifteen year loan. Um, and yeah, and, and you can compare different interest rates if there's difference there. Maybe that actually will save you um, if the VA loan for some reason has you know a, a lower interest rate. But I would I would ask. Um, Ask around and look at your different options when you're ready to buy a home. I would not buy it while I'm in school. Um, and and also, I, don't feel like you have to buy just because you've graduated and have a great job. Yeah, you so you could while. even rent for a little bit. And I, I mean, if I were you, Derek, I would. I mean, I would save up, you know, five to ten percent for a down payment, regardless of which loan you choose to go with. But 
I would probably just go with the 15 year conventional loan if you if I, if it were me. Gotcha. Does that help you out? Yeah, it does. I was the only reason I was asking is because you know in like college you know a few thousand dollars feels like a lot. You know. Oh and yeah. So I always keep thinking about the buying versus renting for a couple of years after graduating and whatnot and stuff like that. So. No, it's great that you're thinking that far ahead. And what I would do if I was in your shoes is start crunching some numbers and go, hey, the homes in my area that I would want to go for are. $250,000. Okay. So how much down payment do I need to get that mortgage payment to be about a quarter of my take-home pay of my after-tax income? And so that'll help you start to get a picture of what you're actually aiming at. Because right now there's this pie in the sky of I want to be a homeowner, which is great, but having those very specific goals is going to help you take the next steps. Yeah. So thank you for your service. We're wishing you the best, man. Joel is up next in Modesto, California. Joel, welcome to the show. Hey, George. Hey, Rachel. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? So my wife and I are on baby step two. Uh, we just moved into our home into September. We're renting. And essentially, uh, we're down to our last payment, which is my wife's car. It's a 2019 Kia Soul. And we are just debating about whether or not we should sell it um, and get uh, a return on that and clear up all of our debt. Mm. A return, you say? Tell me more about this return. What's the car worth and what do you owe? Yeah, so currently we owe fifty six hundred. So by the end of the year, it'll be about five grand, and then uh, we could flip it for about ten, between ten and eleven thousand. Okay. You could sell it for ten to eleven thousand. Yeah, if we did private sale, that's, oh. uh, that was the KB. And then you take that five grand and get a different car. Yeah, I was thinking either just another soul or just anything that we could get that was, you know, relatively reliable. It is our only car, and uh, my wife and I both work. How much do you guys make a year? So currently, uh, I'm per diem. I'm looking to get a full-time job, but uh, our income's a little bit variable. But I would say we're in between the... Thirty-five to five thousand a month, bringing in. If we're both, if we if we both have a good month, it's about five grand after tax. After tax. And in California, I, I feel like that would disappear pretty fast. Yeah. Well, um, it definitely goes by at the beginning of the month. Our rent is fifteen hundred, which is actually pretty good for our housing situations. We have a three bedroom, um, but yeah, it does it does go by with all the expenses and groceries and such. So yeah, um, I mean, Joel, if you guys found another great car for five grand, you could do this deal. But also, you know, if you told me it was twenty grand, that's one thing. But five grand, five you grand, can you knock guys that can out knock fast. that out. Just, yeah, keep paying on if it. If it's been a reliable car, I don't know that it's worth the spread on this thing. Yeah. Because what I don't want you to do is call us back and say, hey, we got that car for five grand. It's given us a lot of issues, and it's our only car. Now we're in a real bind, so we're going to go get a new car for yeah. 50 grand. That's usually the emotion, the yeah. emotional roller coaster. I mean, unless y'all found a car for that price that Which you guys feel, out there. that you feel real good about, and you're like, yeah, we're great with this, and it's... I just know, don't know this. that it's worth the hassle. Yeah, but um, but it's just five grand. I think you guys can just pay that off. Okay. Yeah. No. And honestly, we were we were thinking that. That's that's what my wife has been trying to tell me. I think just uh, just the weight of you're the ready for it, Joel. Payment. You're ready to be done. Yeah, exactly. I'm ready. I'm this ready is like you throw in the towel, be like, and, we can just clean this. And up. this is your last debt. So, how much debt have you guys paid off in this process? Uh, yeah, we. Funny enough, we actually paid uh, my wife's thousand dollar credit card the day after our uh, daughter was born. <laughs> Good. So we've been, um, We've been doing good, and uh, I want to say all together we've paid off about about four or five grand, yeah, since we've been okay. married. Awesome. Good for you guys. That's awesome. I think increasing the shovel is going to be the key to getting rid of this getting debt Getting your faster. job, yeah. I would have an aggressive goal and say, hey, we got to be able to throw a 1000 bucks a month of this thing and be done un in under six months. Then you go, okay, what's the mm -hmm. gap? We can throw 700 a month now. How do we get an extra 300 bucks a month? Yeah. I'm going to go do these side hustles. Yeah. You go do this. That to me is, very, that motivates me to find out what the gap is and then yeah. get there and set a goal that's a little bit uncomfortable for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would you say, um, uh, would you say that with our daughter, she's four months old, um, would you say that we're still in a little bit of stork mode? Because I guess that's kind of my only hesitancy with, you know, I want to knock out the debt, but I also want to be here for kind of these 
you know, this precious first year. So what would, what would you guys say about that? Well, stork mode is usually, hey, well, let's wait until mom and baby are home, they're healthy, they're safe, then let's continue. And so technically you're outside mm-hmm. of those uh, those boundary lines. And I think at this point, the best thing you can do, your four-month-old is not going to remember dad doing side hustles right now. Yeah, I was going to say, mm-hmm. Joel, it, yeah. it only gets harder, if I were to be honest. So for now, I'm like, I would just put my head down, get it done with. And then you're going to look up and be like, okay, we're free from that. We can get our time back and all of it. So uh, I think it only, because then she's going to be looking at you and being like, dad, dad. They're going to start talking. And then you're like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to free. That's really encouraging, Rachel, as a father of a now two-month-old. She's like, it's only going to get harder, you idiot. Good luck with that. Thank you. Very encouraging. Great. Congrats, Joel. You guys are doing awesome. You guys will get there soon enough, my friend. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz. Hey, if you're a new listener to the show, first of all, welcome. We're glad you're here. Don't know what brought you here, but, you know, we are, we're blessed to have you. And if you want to dive deeper on all the stuff we're talking about, the Ramsey baby steps, so on and so forth, you can go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button, and we'll help you figure out the next best step for your financial journey based on where you're at today. That's RamseySolutions.com. Click Get Started. All right, let's get to the phones. Isabel joins us in San Diego. Isabel, welcome to the show. Hi. So I'm a freshman in community college here in California, and I'm 16, and I have a guaranteed spot uh, transferring to whatever institution I, like, tag to. And my parents are moving out of state this year, which means I only have one year of in-state tuition. And I have a, I will have a full ride if, with that in-state tuition. And I have enough credits where I can graduate in one year after I transfer. But in order to do that, I would have to pay 12 k for summer classes in total. And that would be the only cost. And if I do it in more than one year, it would cost me over 60 k for the living expenses and everything. So wow. this is my only option. So your options are pay 12 k or 60 yeah, and so 12K is obviously what I'm going with. Good. Um, and the thing is, my parents cannot afford that. 12K is way too much, especially in a couple of months. And there's no way they're going to be able to afford it. I can't work a job. Um, I, I'm currently taking 30 credits. I'm going to be taking 36 next semester. And I also homeschool my sister. I just do not have the time to work a job. And also my parents commute, so there's no way for me to get to a job there's a plethora of issues. I can't work a job. I can't save up for it. So the only option would be loans. The thing is, I'm going to be 16 at the time still, at the time where I have to pay it. And my parents don't want to help me take out loans. So I think my question is, how do I convince them or find another way to pay for it? Okay. Um, wow. There's okay, a lot let's, going let's on just, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. First um, of all, are you like some kind of prodigy? I'm so confused and impressed at the same time. No, um, I graduated high school at 15 because I took an exam where in California, like they discontinued it this year, but they let you graduate early if you pass an exam with certain things. So you yeah. are a prodigy. <laughs> no. You're really no, no, smart, but, uh, well, but for real. But for real, though, Isabel, because that's going to be part of my answer. You said you're graduating just, in one year. Okay, so so I want to make sure I get all this right because I think there is a plan, okay? I, I feel very <laughs> hopeful. I feel very hopeful. Okay. So you are you are 16. You are in community yeah. college now. Huh? And it's free, uh-huh. sure. and you're. Yeah, but but really. the problem is your parents are going to be moving out of state. When are they moving out of state? Uh, at the end of this year, and for the for the college I'm going to be transferring to, um, 
you can you they do your tax forms for financial aid the year before so i'm going to be a resident for this year so it'll be free but the next year so my second year there it won't be free so i have to do it in one year okay. which i can 2024 is what like yeah. in 2024 uh, 2024 to 2025 is when i'm going to be transferring and that's going to be my only year and that's going to be your year but it's still free then yeah it's still free, free. except for the 12 for the summer classes okay so my question is, what state are they moving to? Uh, um, Nevada. <laughs> and, and are you not going with them? Uh, no, because I'm going to be transferring. It's cool. So, so you're going to be li- so you're going to be living by you're going to be on your own at uh-huh. six, at 17 years old. 16, and te- 17, yeah. 16, 17 years old, and you are going to be technically what a junior in college with your credits. Uh, with my credits, I'll be a senior. You'll be a senior. Okay. So how many credits are left with this 12 grand? Uh, Cause this, I understand the summer school thing. So how many credits are in the summer school program? Okay. So I'm going to be transferring with 70. I need 120 total. I'm going to be taking 20 over the summer, which is doable. Cause I took 20 over the summer, but, but, this, but the 20, then, but those 20 cost 12 grand and you can't do that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Those so twenty cost twelve grand. So those don't count not- because you may not be able to do this summer. Is what I'm is what I'm going to be getting at. So, but you'll be able oh. to get a hundred of the other credits done, free, right? So you have twenty credits left, and the twenty credits do what after. Uh, I'm transferring with seventy. I have to do twenty over the summer, and I'll have thirty left in the year, and those are free. The thirty left are free. Okay. So you have twenty. You have 20 credits that you need. They cost 12 grand. You don't have 12 grand. We're not going to tell you to take out loans, Isabel. So you have 20 credits left to get a college degree. Yes. So what I would do, Isabel, is I would look at schools in Nevada. And I would say, hey, I'm going to for a year stay here in California, get it free. And then in order to get these 20 credits, I'm going to be moving schools in Nevada. And here's the beautiful thing, Isabel. You are brilliant. You are 16 years old as a basically a junior in college right now. And so whether it takes you for those 20 credits, a full semester to do, you're used to do it. You're, you're doing double that now, right? So, so you're going to be doing half of that in Nevada, taking in-state tuition from your parents, applying for every scholarship and grants. And you're gonna and you're gonna do it. It's gonna look a lot different than your plan, but I'm telling you, Isabel, I at 16 years old, I would not take out twelve thousand dollars. I don't. You're not even able to because your parents won't pay for it or won't sign it, which is good on them. I'm proud of them. I am. So I think you you're gonna have to look at multiple options and and lower your expectations some. And and there's no rush either, Isabel. Like I know, like you're moving you're, a million miles per you hour. You are, and you're doing all of this because I get because it's free, and you want to take advantage of that. So I'm all for that. But everything else can just take a breath, take a breath, and you can slow it down, do it over the course of a year when you're 18 years old and work part time and do it then and, and graduate debt free. You know, the, the, the rush and the urgency is going to cause you not to be able to have the capacity to look at all the different options out there. And it may cause you to make a bad decision because you're so laser focused on one way. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I just like had a question about that. Cause I thought about that too, like taking credits in Nevada. The thing is they don't, um, for UCs, they won't transfer. I called them and everything. They won't transfer those 20 credits. So I have to take those 20 credits over the summer. So my plan kind of is contingent on convincing my parents to co-sign it. No, and no. And it's like really stressful. No, <laughs> I Delete would not that do that. Plan. Don't do that, Isabel. No, you. I would look at other options. Maybe you don't go to this school. Maybe you just go to Nevada. Go to Nevada with your parents in the year and go to school in Nevada and get scholarships and grants and graduate from a school in Nevada. California, there's other places that have degrees other than just California. <laughs> if yeah, I'm telling, This I'm, plan I'm, is so I'm, contingent on big, every variable working, which I'm, scares me. Yes, and if I'm your big sister, Isabel, I'm like... This is not, it's not wise. We talked to so many people on the show, Isabel, so many people, and they are still paying off loans. Every, almost every caller we have with debt still has student loans. And, and, and there's a way around this. And, and, I'm, and I feel confident in that because of how freaking smart you are. And so the scholarships and grants and everything else, like there's still going to be, there's going to be options out there for yeah. you. The other piece of the puzzle is you said you're homeschooling your sister. Where is she going? She 
is um okay so i'm gonna stop swim pulling her because they expect me to transfer by the end of this year um one of my brothers is gonna start staying home and doing that okay wouldn't that free up some time for you um it's gonna be by the end of next year so f- still for this um semester i'm gonna be homeschooling her still and next semester oh you're so, but your parents are moving without her without her no, no, no. They're, they're going, um, okay. So for this year, from 2023 to 2024, I'm going to be homeschooling her. And then they're going to move at the end of this summer. Oh. So, yeah. And then my brother's going to go homeschool her. But, okay. Yeah, Can we delay their move? Why is it, what's the urgency for them to move? They're buying a house. And they've already bought it? I have no clue, but they said, we're buying a house. We're moving. It's, um, they probably went out of California. <laughs> My mom's been here for 50 years. She's been paying taxes since, like, longer than I've been alive. It, she just yeah. does not want to be here I anymore. know. Yeah. In my head, though, I'm like, if I'm able no. to let my daughter go to school debt-free by sticking around for a few more months, I'm like, that right. would be ideal. But it sounds but like that's, that's not part of the yeah, equation. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's out of your control, Isabel. You're not going to be able to, to Oh, man. So, you Isabel, I mean, I honestly, girl, I would just be looking at other options. And you're so young. It's not like you're 24 still trying to get your undergrad degree. I'm like... You have time. Time is on your side. So slow it down. Slow it down and look at options. Do this wisely. You don't need debt, Isabel. You don't need debt. Don't need it. And here's one more piece of homework since you're very good at it. Go watch our free documentary, Borrowed Future. You can watch it on YouTube. Go to borrowedfuture.com. Check that out. And you'll see why Rachel has such urgency. I'm proud of you, girl. To help you go to school debt free. I, I think you're smart. Great. You got this. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz this hour, and it's a free call at 888-825-5225. If you've got a question, a conundrum, maybe you just need us to settle the score between spouses or family, we're happy to do whatever you want on this show. And Hannah's going to kick us off in Akron, Ohio this hour. Hannah, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure. What's going on? So I am 22. Uh, my boyfriend's 23. And my question is, all of our debt will be paid off by April of 2025. That's credit card, two vehicles, and um, yeah, credit card and two vehicles. All we have left will be our new mortgage we just acquired last year. But our problem is our house is sitting on land that's not in our name. So should I stay on our plan to pay everything off now in 2025 or keep that extra money, start piling it into a savings to put a down payment on the property by this next year? So you're looking to buy the land? Yes. How did that not happen with the sale of the house or when you guys bought the house? What was the 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 deal? The original deal was that me and my boyfriend were looking for a house. We couldn't get approved for a house by itself. So we bought a modular home and my grandma said, oh, you can put it on my property. Um, and then you guys can eventually, when you can buy the property and keep it in the family name. Okay, cool. So we did that. Um, and she has just been letting us have it here. So it's not just some smojo that we have it on. It is family. Sure. Um, however, she needs to get out of her debt that she has on the property. So ideally we don't want to cut her short on buying the property just to pay off what she has but we also want to give her a fair price for it. So we've been here for about a year. We can financially, I think, buy it by end of next year, but I don't know if I should stockpile all my extra I'm putting into paying off my credit card and our two vehicles okay. or put it towards a down payment. <clears throat> okay. Um, can we go like a little high level conversation here, Hannah, for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so when you are talking about your finances with your boyfriend, you're using a lot of like we statements, we're doing this, our debt, all of it. So 
just doing this for as long as we have, um, when you are not legally married, mm-hmm. there is not an hours we conversation. It's a Hannah's conversation. And what's your boyfriend's name? Joey. Joey? Yes. And Joey's money right so like like these there's gonna be two separate lanes here and i know that's gonna be difficult for you to kind of untangle in your head because it has been so unified but what ends up happening is is that you combine emotionally acting like you're married combining accounts uh paying on each other's debt all of it without any legal representation and no legal documents here that if something happens and i'll say if um that it's a complete mess. And our job is to be there for the people when it's a complete mess. So those are a lot of the calls and some of the the, the stories that we hear on that side. So what I have learned is as separate as you can live, that could be financially, physically, all the things like as separate as you can live until you're married, it is it is a cleaner break. There, there, there is something about it that, that it just makes it cleaner on an emotional and financial side. So I'm going to ask you, Hannah, how much do you bring in with your job? What do you make? 50,000. You make 50,000. Okay. How, how much, how cards do you, do you have any, do, are any of your credit cards have his name attached to them at all? Or are they just, are there credit cards with just Hannah's name? Just the credit card that's in my name. He has his own that his he pays. Perfect. So what's how much I, how much do you have in your on your in your credit card? How much debt do you have on your credit card? Twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred. Okay, perfect. And then you have a car. Is it just under your name? One of the cars? Yes. Okay, and how much do you owe on that one? Five thousand. Five thousand. Perfect. Okay. And what does Joey make a year? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Perfect. And what does um uh, for his credit cards, how much does he owe? Only like a thousand. A thousand, perfect. And what about his car? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Truck. Twenty nine thousand. Okay, perfect. 000. Okay, cool. Okay, so what I would do, Hannah, is I would be working to pay your using your fifty k to be paying off your credit card. You paying off your car, and he's working his plan. You can do it at the same time, but I would not be mixing numbers. And you guys have your own plan now. The mortgage is mm-hmm. it in both your names? It is. We okay. have to do it that way to get approved. Yes, because you guys can't, you couldn't afford it otherwise. So, mm-hmm. right. Um, okay, so that's done. So my next piece of advice then would be to, if you, if you decide on your own, Hannah, to put to to buy this property, which I don't think you can afford right now with on your grandmother's property, I I, I don't I don't see that happening soon. And if I were Joey, I would not be tying my name into land deeds and loans and all of it with a family loan that on a family property that I'm not I'm not legally bound to. Like he's the one. And honestly, Anna, he'd be the one that gets screwed in this whole situation if you guys break up. Um, so my next thing would be. Are y'all I hope get, not. Are y'all, it's been eight years. <laughs> are y'all do what? I said, I hope not. It's been eight years. <laughs> yeah, Hannah and. Y'all are 22 and 23. Okay, I'll be I mean, you, I, the when, only reason we're not married is because we don't have the funds to do that. Uh, there whoa, is Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. Eh, not, wrong answer. Ring. You're telling we me you had the funds to get a mortgage, but not to get go married? Go to Walmart and buy a silver, <laughs> a silver band. Go on Amazon. I could go right now on Amazon and get you guys two rings for $9.99. You go to the cross and get married. Go get married. Do it. I've said that, but it's not good enough. It's not special enough. So Joey. For him or for you? <laughs> for him. He's making excuses. Well, you guys Anna. are acting like you're married anyways. So what is it? What is what does a certificate do? It didn't change it that much. So he much. wants to become a real estate mogul with you, but not put a ring on it. He's making excuses. <laughs> he's, he's heard it from both sides. My okay. dad and Hannah. Okay. Let me just tell you this. I w- Okay, you should be glad Rachel's on this call because I am. My blood go, is boiling. Go, George. At this. You well, can add in. I just your keep... life is like a common core math problem. It's so messed up. It hurts my brain. You guys got yourself into a mess, and you're digging a hole deeper by getting entrenched in grandma's financial situation, taking on land debt on top of a mortgage that's in both of your names, but you're not married to help grandma out, right? Yeah. Did you hear how crazy that sentence was? 
I know, and I know it was a crazy situation. How about this? How about we back in? out of this land deal because we can't afford it, and we're 22 trying to figure out our life? I think we get out of this modular home. Number one, that modular home is going down in value. It's not a great investment anyways. So I would get out of that thing as soon as you could. Good luck finding another renter for it, right? Yeah, that was kind of from the beginning of why it even happened. But We have we to think about the future when we make decisions today. And I really pray that we can resolve this, that you guys can get out of this mess, that you get married, that you step foot, uh, get on the right foot with this thing. But right now, There's I'm no not land continuing deal happening. with this deal. No, you can't. You can't afford it, Hannah. You can't afford it. And it's not your responsibility either in this. So I would find, yeah, separate those finances. You guys work your plan. Tell Joey to go on Amazon. I can send them a link. And I'll send them a link. Hey folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is Hallow. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz. We're co-hosting The Ramsey Show today, but we also co-host Smart Money Happy Hour, which you can find on YouTube, podcasts, Spotify, Ramsey Network app, wherever you like to listen. And uh, if you want a little easier listening, you want that show you can share with a friend who doesn't really get Ramsey, know Ramsey. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect little uh, appetizer, if you will, for the Ramsey universe. You know what's another little great appetizer? What's that? Um, I have a kid's book called I'm Glad for What (gasps) I Have. And it's pre-order right now. So if you have friends that you're like, oh, it would be great to like teach you know about content it's about contentments and it has little animals it rhymes it's very short and it's you're beautifully welcome, parents. illustrated it's beautifully illustrated so if you have a friend that's gonna have a baby or you're going to a baby shower uh, or maybe like a birthday party you can like put that in the kid's gift and then the parents will be like this is a great message we should talk about money more and then you can introduce them that's what we're trying to do here just secretly get you to talk <laughs> about money and influence your kids and your adults in your life and the people that you love so yeah, That's go to RamseySolutions.com uh, and in the store you can pre-order. I'm glad for what I have. I can't wait to book. read it to my little it, look at the look at the pictures old. in that YouTube people. You get to see a little oh, bit. It's not just beautiful. It really is. I can't wait to read it so to Mia. Sweet. At what age can kids understand you reading to them? Oh, you know, not like fully understand, but what age you start reading to your kids? I don't know. James has kids too. Six months, a year. Two? What age do you start reading to them? No, yeah. do they start understanding? Like two-ish, probably. At what point Maybe is it not pointless? Months, By the time months, you start to years? realize that they understand it's too late, so just start early. Just <laughs> Get them it early. It is true. That is probably true. Well, James they, has like Einstein babies. They're like prodigy level, just perfect children. So smart. <laughs> oh, love it. All right, let's get to the phones. Roman is in Jacksonville, Florida. Roman, welcome to the show. Hi, my name is Roman. Very nice to speak with y'all. Glad y'all are taking the time to do this. I'm a disabled combat veteran. I served in Afghanistan. That resulted in me being retired from the Army at the age of 22. Life spun upside down. 
14 years later, I finally won my battle with the VA of getting compensation for uh, those issues that I accrued while deployed. Wow. And I find myself sitting in a unique situation. I'm on the baby steps, but it is a daycare facility with no adult supervision. Whoa. Here's the numbers. I make $7,180 a month. That's net tax-free because of the type of income that it is, compensation from the VA and other disability sources. That's $86,000 annually. Um, the out-of-whack baby step that I is most glaring is the house purchase. Life, as you can imagine, with my story, has thrown me a number of curveballs, but I was presented the opportunity to secure housing for myself. I have other debts, but I was able to buy my home from family for $38,000. I currently owe $8,000 more. I pay $2,500 a month. It'll be paid off February of 2023. Awesome. That's a huge chunk. You mean 24, 24. Months in a few months? Yes, that's what I meant, 24, awesome. where I wrote the wrong year. Awesome, now you're good. <laughs> yeah. um, outside of that debt, I owe about thirty k on a car, and I have $6,300 in credit card debt. If I follow your one through seven steps, which I've not, obviously paying off the house in this manner, you know, that would come later. But I, I had to do it. The house is valued at two hundred sixty-eight thousand. With the oh, you got a great deal. Yeah, it's from an uncle. Yeah, it's within the yeah. family, but yeah. done the proper way. So I find myself burdened by that large payment each month, but that burden comes from poor management of my funds. So my question is pretty much hearing that, knowing that I'm trying to pursue these steps, how do I, what do I do? What's your house payment right now? Just the actual payment itself without the extra? 2,500 even. Oh, okay. You're not putting extra. That's just what it is. I'm buying it from my uncle who owns it free and clear, and I'm paying 2500 monthly. I have three more months, 3.2 more months. Got it. So this is like a handshake type deal. This is not your traditional loan. Correct. Okay. No mortgage, no interest, no nothing. Okay. And you guys agreed it's going to get paid by this time. Oh, yeah. I've got it. I've got it in contract with him. I, I was not doing anything else well financially, and I committed to myself. I will put down roots and have a stable, safe place for myself if mm-hmm. that's the only bill I pay. Okay. I mean, it got to that point. So I stuck to it, never missed a payment, don't intend to. Where's the other, you know, four and a half, four and a half thousand dollars going? So right now, my 7180 is my income. My bill pay goes $2,500 to a mortgage. I pay uh, 825 in alimony and child support. I have 253 auto insurance, 154 home insurance. You know, cell phone bill, car note, and then you know. What's yeah, the car? How much note? you owe on the car? I'm sorry. Uh, how you owe thirty thousand? How much is it worth? Uh, I could sell if I sold it today, eighteen. So I'm ten under. It's and what's the payment? Six twelve a month. Okay. Well, I think there's still a bunch of money left over. You may be better off in your weird situation that you find yourself in, having to pay this mortgage back to your uncle, is put extra on the mortgage, get rid of it as soon as possible to free up 2500 bucks to then attack the car and the credit card. Which puts me right back on track with the baby steps. Yes. Yeah, without, you're right. without you baby steps. They're, they're out of Imagine order. Imagine the house thing out, but then doing everything, one through the other numbers. Yeah, yeah. Well, because if you you can't really, you know, you you got to keep making this mortgage payment. You could start attacking your consumer debt, and you still have this going on. But in your shoes, with this big old mortgage, freeing that twenty five hundred up fast could work to get rid of your other debt faster. So either way, you're fine. If you want to do twenty five hundred on that mortgage, any extra money you have left over, put towards your start with your credit card. Knock that out, then move on to the car loan, finish that out. Right. Uh, You'd still be okay either way. I think if you did the math, it'd probably be, uh, it wouldn't be much difference. Got it. Awesome. Well, you're uh, right. It's a weird situation. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, the one comment I'd say, I know you are busy and other callers. I, I look for, you know, what do you, the investment question then becomes a thing. When it does come time to invest, with all of my income being tax free, What's the best place to park those funds when I have no other obligations? Uh, well, when you're looking at just retirement, I mean, I would do I would open up a Roth. Does the military have any 
benefits were in that regard? No, not when not when they retire you. They, okay. They buy. <laughs> Yeah, up until then. Yeah, um, outside of your traditional retirement plans, you've got the IRA. So I would open up a Roth IRA, max that out every year. That's going to put you, you know, sixty five hundred bucks. It'll go up every year, and you get catch up contributions after fifty. How old are you? Thirty seven. Okay, so you got plenty of time, which is great. And having yeah. no payments at your age, I mean, you'll be debt free shortly. And, and you're not working, right, Roman? This money is. Uh, Correct. This this comes unless I commit a felony and go to federal prison. Let's okay. avoid that. <laughs> Let's avoid that. Well, Roman, yeah. thanks for your service and, and all so you've much. done. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. And the, the other places you could invest is outside of retirement in a brokerage account. Yeah. You know, you could invest in index funds over there. If you you could that, also I'm get into real estate. If you want to get yeah. a, save up and get yourself a paid for rental property or something like that, that's yeah. another great avenue to build wealth. Yeah. Winston and I, we opened up just a mutual fund, just a growth stock mutual fund and put some extra savings in there. It's not tax, you know, you don't get the tax benefit like a Roth, but, um, but that's the place we just put some savings. And if we ever need it, we're able to, without penalty, you know, be able to get it, but we just let it sit in there and yeah. you have the growth too. So yeah, that's a, that's have a, a good options. factor there is you will have, you know, your taxes on the gains. So yes. that's something to think about with short-term gains, long-term capital gains. But it's a great place to invest outside of retirement. There is a, yeah. It's nice having that bucket on top of retirement because you can't tap into the retirement piggy bank until 60. That's right. You'll so this is a great way to fees. save up for big purchases. You know, Dave does this. He gets a big royalty check from a book or something, and mm -hmm. he'll put it in index funds in a brokerage account, yep. and it just let it pile up until he wants to buy something. Yep, that's right. It's a good problem to have. Yes, that's great, Roman. But Thanks yeah, the, the call. traditional baby steps, for those wondering, he's like, I did this out of whack. We want you to be out of consumer debt first with a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months before you start saving up for a home purchase. So that is the correct order because we find people that get into homes before they should with a pile of debt on the other side leads to a more stressful life. Yep. You become right. house poor and that house becomes a burden instead of a blessing. And that's not the American dream. That becomes the American nightmare real quick. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz this hour. Good news for those of you who love a survey. The Ramsey Show annual listener survey is now live. And this really is one of the most helpful things for our team. All the personalities we gather, we look at the data, what you guys are saying, and it actually affects the show. And so please let us know, what are your favorite parts of the show? What do you like? What do you not like? What do you want to hear more about? What kind of topics? Um, whatever it is, we want to hear from you. And there are two ways to participate in this. If you're a texter, you can text the word SURVEY. S 
U R V E Y to this number, 33789. Survey to 33789. Or you can go to RamseySolutions.com slash survey if you're more of a web browser type. Either way is fine. It'll get to us. And if you sign up today, you'll be entered to win a $500 gift card just for taking the survey and letting us know your thoughts. So go take that survey today. Survey to 33789, RamseySolutions.com slash survey. The number to call if you want to jump in is 888 5225. Julie has chosen to do so, and she's in Austin, Texas. Julie, what's going on? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? We're doing great. We're great. Glad you called, Julie. Rachel already likes you. I can tell. (laughs) She's so nice. She likes your attitude. She's very nice. Do I? Oh, gosh. I said I can relate to you because you're a mom like me. Mm. Um, It's not fair. I can't be a mother. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. Oh, they're amazing. I have... um, I have a primary question and then I have um, a few other questions as well. But my primary is I sell real estate and so I'm I'm really good at making a bunch of money really fast and I'm not so great at keeping that consistent. So um, the last three or four years of my career, I've been living on gross commission income and not net. And so I'm in trouble with the IRS. Um, oh, boy. And so I, I owe the IRS $150,000. Oh, um, mackerel. I'm on my home, and I'm wondering if I need to sell my home um, in order to take care of that. Um, this last summer, we had a series of unfortunate events in our family, which has never happened before, and that was multiple car accidents at different times, which depleted our savings account, our HSA and medical savings. And so we're really starting back at baseline for savings as well. Um, And so I feel very vulnerable (laughs) just even calling today and and asking, like, where do I even start? Um, So thankfully, um, our our debt is relatively low, um, and I have $60,000 coming in for income the next three weeks. Um, when these unfortunate events happened in our world, um, late July, early August, the, the like nail in the wall for, for us was my real estate income, everything that was in escrow, which was about five transactions, like exploded. They fell out of escrow for a variety of different reasons. And I didn't have any income coming in um, until just now this month. Um, so we were able to pay and cover all the bare minimums. We cut our budget in half, do all the half twos. I mean, we got down to bare bones. Um, and, Who's and we, I'm really Julie? Proud of us for doing that. Um, my husband and I. Okay, what does he we make? Have three teenagers. Uh, he makes eighty four. Okay. And I sell about ten million a year, which brings in gross about three hundred. Um, but again, it's not consistent. And I think that's. I would say I'm more comfortable saying eight million. So we're we talking anywhere between two and two and three hundred k, is fair. Correct for the last okay. few years. Okay. Um, has the IRS been in contact with you? Like, are they? What are they saying? So um, I don't know if this was legit or not, but I I had a company help me get on a payment plan with the IRS, and I I can't locate them anymore. I paid them two or three thousand oh, dollars no, to get me Julie. on a payment plan, and. Um, I, I'm just, I'm so embarrassed. I'm no, just like, yeah. No, it's okay. I feel bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, well, and when you're in a vulnerable state like that and you're desperate, you kind of just make decisions. And usually in hindsight, you look back and you're like, oh, wow, my desperation drove some of those unwise yeah. decisions, right? But when you're in that pinch, you're like, what's anything I can do to help this situation? So um, that, I understand how so, you, how that happens. But um, okay, so. It's a little bit of debt that we have left. We've got 25000 in credit card, partially uh, a lot of that was put on just so we could make it through these last few months. Um, car, we've got one car loan at six thousand dollars, and then student loan fifteen, and then that's it. Okay, okay. Well, the great thing is, Julie, you guys make great money. Um, I would move this IRS debt to the front. I would, I would say, current on the student loans and the car and the credit cards, but I would not be paying extra on anything. I would pay minimum payments on all of those. And I would put oh, okay. as much as I could towards this IRS debt. The IRS debt is always kind of the red flag debt when we hear people um, because they can garnish wages. I mean, they're ins- it's insane, right? So like we want them 
out of your life as soon as possible. It gets a fast pass to the front of the line. It does get a fast pass okay. to the terrible ride of life I have to have a Disney analogy sometimes. for Rachel. Thanks. I appreciate that, George. To lighten the mood. Um, so the 60... Gr- so what I would do, Julie, honestly, because you're amazing. Like you're an incredible at what you do, obviously. The market isn't necessarily on your side right now. Like it's been probably in the last like three years. Um, so you're probably mm-hmm. feeling a little bit of that. But if I were you guys, your husband makes great money. I would just say, hey, let's just... You've already cut your lifestyle in half. What's the mm-hmm. bare bones we could live on? Because if you guys could find a way to live on 70, right? That frees up 14,000 of his income, all of your income. And together, you guys could get this debt out, you know, within, a, within I don't know, a, a year, 13 months. Um, if you guys mm-hmm. really, really, and if you hustle, Julie, if you were like, all right, I am, I'm laser focused. Um, you know, mm-hmm. if you guys called me and you were making 70 and that was it, then, then there's, there may be some really big conversations we'd have to have. But I, I don't know, George, you chime in, but yeah, I, I feel I'm, like, I'm because going, they Julie, make you're going to make 150 grand in six months, potentially, right? Yeah, I really shifted, um, after everything stopped, I expanded the market that I was in and just took anything that was coming in and, and it's the fruit is here. Good. Yeah. Um, so that's the deal. Think so, about it this way. In six months, you could have this IRS debt paid off. But here's the key. I know. That money from your real estate doesn't even touch your life. It hits your bank account. It goes right to the IRS. That's it. That's what you want me to do? Yes. Like put that as primary. And yes. Every single yes. cent you make from real estate right now, go to the IRS. Yeah. In six months, the IRS debt is paid if you make 150 Gross, right? Mm-hmm. Now, we still have to worry about mm-hmm. taxes for the future income you're mm-hmm. making, but then mm-hmm. we can knock out your other debt. You've got, what, another 30, how much did you have total? 25, 6, and 15. So you got 46 mm-hmm. in consumer debt after that. I would do the that. car first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just knock mm-hmm. out smallest to largest balance from there. That's probably going to get knocked out three months later. Are you guys um, budgeting, Julie, at all, you and your husband? Oh, yes. Um, we have weekly budget meetings now. Okay. This is all new for us, like the last yeah. couple of months. Do that, you guys you know, do you guys um, use every dollar, our budgeting app? I do. I, I do because it's a daily going through our bank account. He's wired differently and likes the spreadsheet. Okay. Okay. So, no, that's good. Um, um, I just want to make sure, yeah, that um, that you guys have some kind of plan that you're doing because that's going to be helpful too. Um, and it's going to be uncomfortable, Julie. I mean, I know you already feel that with already cutting the lifestyle yeah. down, but um, but you're a high producer. I mean, you're you're amazing of killing and doing so well with your work. So income wise, I'm not worried about you guys because you're bringing in great income. Yeah, a year from now, you yeah. are, you could be yeah. completely debt free with an emergency. So fund. I think the thing is, Julie, it's it's now up to Julie and your husband to like look at yourselves, and I'm sure you have just to be like, okay, we're the problem. Like we shouldn't be in this situation because we make great money. And so making sure our taxes are done correctly is very important. And then making sure we live within our lifestyle. And when you do that, um, it changes the game. Like you guys will be able to actually enjoy your money that you've worked really hard for. And, you know, you, you shouldn't have to depend on credit cards to make ends meet anymore. You shouldn't have to, you know, take out a car loan for a car. Like no No more living La Vida Loca. (laughs) <laughs> it's over. I'm sorry. But here's what you do need to do. Go get in touch with a Ramsey Trusted Tax Pro at RamseySolutions.com. They can help you navigate this. You don't need to get on a payment plan with some sketchy no, company. don't do that again. Yeah. They'll help you navigate this, but it's time. And from now on, quarterly estimated payments. That is how you avoid the IRS down your back and how you stay on top of this stuff for anyone out there who's on that kind of commission type job. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. 
Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by my good friend Rachel Cruz. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. Dale is up next in Birmingham, Alabama. Dale, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Um, I hope these are easy questions for you. Me too, man. I can't um, take anything today. <laughs> Dale, be great. What's going on? Um, I am 57 years old. Um, my salary is 143 and I have the retirement bug. My wife will be 63 the end of this month, and she works part time and makes between 15 and 18 thousand. We've met with a local uh, Social Security advisor, and he is a fiduciary, but he made some suggestions that I wanted to run by you guys. Okay. First, the first he thinks my wife should go ahead and apply for Social Security at 63 instead of waiting he thinks that the social security plus her part-time salary will keep her out of that 50 percent penalty what do you guys think about that to have her take social security earlier at 63 yes at 63 what's she going to do with the money um save it so invest it because you guys don't need it to live on no, no, no. We're we're completely debt free. The kids are grown and gone. Awesome. What's your total uh, nest egg? Uh, just a little over a million. Awesome. Good for okay. you guys. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to use that amazing income you have to try to sock away as much as I can in these tax advantage retirement plans in the meantime. But my thoughts around Social Security, Rachel might have different thoughts, but mm-hmm. I like taking it early if you're going to invest it. Because investing it, even though it's a smaller pile of money you get every month, investing that will generally uh, cause you to be in a better financial position in the long run versus waiting and taking it later. And also, it'd be nice to know, if, you know, we knew our, our death day. That would really help us crunch the numbers accurately, but we don't. <laughs> we don't know when the good Lord's going to take was, us. So that's part of the equation here. Well, part of me wants to know for planning, but part of me doesn't want to know. So. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Um, true. Exactly. That's true. that's true. So yeah, I don't. I, it doesn't sound like they're giving crazy advice to go ahead and take Social Security at, at sixty three. Yeah, if you're able to okay. kind of have that principled approach, though, because again, you know, if you take it early, you're getting that you're getting the smaller amount. And if you go just spend it, then it feels like oh my gosh, it could have been it could have been higher later. Oh, no. we, but yeah, but if we, you invest it, then you're actually going to end up making more, and it's in your hands, which is great. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm with George on that one. Um, okay. My next question is with my salary, I max out my 401k with catch up contributions. Good. I max out my HSA. I max out a Roth IRA. Good. And the, the financial advisor is wanting me to start taking some of that out using the rule of 55 so that I don't pay the excise tax, but to start putting that into annuities and just go ahead and take the ha- the tax hit now, but he's telling me that'll be better in the long run? When you're running out with the annuity. That part feels fishier to me. I'm not saying that they're giving you terrible advice, but I'm generally not a fan of annuities. What, what was his purpose in saying, hey, put this money here, take this money out, let's put an annuity to give you future income? What's the benefit there financially? He, he He's pitching it as being better, uh, having a tax advantage, and he's also threatening minimum requirements distributions later on. Out of our nest egg, a little over 800000 of that is qualified money in a 401k. Okay. What kind of annuity was he talking about here? Because there's uh, different types. I do not recall. There's fixed annuities, variable yeah. annuities, indexed annuities. 
I know it is not variable. Okay. Yeah, I would – my – I don't want to speak ill on this financial advisor because they might be a great person. But I always wonder why are they pushing me to this? What What's their end game? Do they get a commission by getting me in an annuity yeah. versus me pitching into my 401k? Yeah. That's something to think about. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the annuity, oh, and, I mean – I know. It, it's it, a vested interest. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know that he gets paid for annuity. He, he told us the percentage. Okay. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with getting paid to put you into certain products, no. but I just wonder, sure. is that a piece of the puzzle? Yeah. And honestly, Dale, I mean, like with annuities, I mean, it's great because there's basically like the, you know, you can predict there's that um, confidence factor of what I'm going to get out, but also you can miss so much of that growth, putting it somewhere else too. So um, you guys are just yeah. in a really great position. And so, I mean, I'm not keen on, I mean, all the tax detail stuff, I would sit down probably with like a Ramsey smart tax, I, I would sit down with somebody and dive into those numbers because I don't want to steer you one way or the other on that. Um, but I, I feel like the plan you guys are on because again, annuities, I feel like are more if you're, I would, the, the only time I would even consider an annuity for me, just a, from a mindset perspective is if I'm so fearful of the market, I don't know what's going to happen. And just knowing that there's predictable income that's going to be coming in and it just is okay. But you guys don't have any place to have that fear because you guys have done incredible. You make great money. You continue to invest. And so I I wouldn't mess with a Dale personally. Okay. But I would get a second I opinion because again, I, and unless George, you can speak into it, the, 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 the deep detail of all the taxes... Um, if there yeah, is an advantage is. there, I would get a second opinion and just making sure this guy isn't just selling you a product. Yeah. But well, you also have some Roth money as well, so you have to factor That's that right. in as far as you know. Yeah. you're not going to have RMDs there, and there's you're not going to be. Yeah, you can strategically start pulling from different buckets. You know, your Roth account, which is tax free, your 401k, traditional, you'll pay taxes on that. Your outside of retirement money in a brokerage account, you can dip into that. And so there's a lot of ways to look at this, but. I just I want to be leery about telling you one way or another to jump into this, but it's it's always a red flag when annuities are brought up and it's being pitched by someone. It's at least something to pause and really get a second opinion on this. Because if you didn't do it, Dale, you guys are going to be in a great position. Just hear us say that. You're, you got no debt. Right. You'll have yeah. a million plus, and every seven years, if the market returns are around ten percent, that money would double. And so at right. sixty, you know, sixty three, <laughs> sixty four, you got two million. At seventy, you got three million. And so if, as long as you're not withdrawing a crazy amount on these retirement accounts, you guys should be more than fine. Okay. And, well, again, this that's the first time I've ever heard this annuity spend, taking money from 401k and putting it into annuity. That's what – Yeah. that was a red flag to me as yeah, well. Yeah, it's good. And my, my final question is, if I am going to have minimum distri- uh, required distribution issues later on, should I cut my 401k back to just – maximize the company benefit and no i I wouldn't minimize investing because of a future tax implication i'm going to put as much as i can in those accounts and we'll deal with uncle sam later on and we can be strategic about that okay because there's certain things you can do where if you pull from the tax-free account you're not paying taxes on that and then you can pull a little bit from the tax advantage account and so you can start to minimize and work with a tax pro on how to you know of course legally do all of this to where you're not paying a whole bunch of taxes every single year. Gotcha. But man, well, I'm... keep keep working and don't worry about problems that might come up thirty years from now. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Exactly, Dale. I'm so proud of you, man. That what a beautiful picture. Well done. Of just what life looks like you're, on the baby steps. You're what everyone wants to be, Dale. Just <laughs> calm, cool, collected, Dale. With a million bucks. No Cheers. payments, no mortgage payment. We're good. Maxing out every retirement account known to man. Mm-hmm. You're going to be okay. Making 143000 awesome, That is a That's a nice story, Rachel. Usually well when people done. talk to us about these situations in retirement and they're in their late 50s, yeah. it's sad stories where yeah. they haven't done anything. It's hard. That's right. And that's so right. it's a great reminder to start early. And early doesn't mean when you're 20. If you're 50... Start today. That's the next best time to invest. And so don't get yourself down and go, I missed the boat. There's no point now of investing in a 401k. And the other thing is a lot of people are spooked by the market and the economy. And I'm heading into retirement, Rachel. I don't want to invest. But we've seen long term, the American economy is going to be okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we we went and looked and ran all the numbers even when you go back out from 
uh, when inflation was like really high in the 80s to events like September 11th or the recession and, um, you know, 07, 08. And so you, you can even start to map all of that and you watch the growth still come back, still come yeah, back. A year or two later, and we bounce still back. Down, yeah, there's still down times, but that it, it's the long term play, especially for everyone listening. That's, you know, 50 and below. It's a long-term play. Long-term play. Do not pull your money out of the market. No. Please. I want you to retire with dignity, and that means playing the long game. Think long-term. That's the key to building wealth. This is The Ramsey Show. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz this hour, and this is your show. We're here, but it's really about you. So call us, 888-825-5225. And if uh, you're wondering, is that the same George and Rachel from Smart Money Happy Hour? You would be correct. <laughs> you and would be correct. We have a great time uh, filming and creating that show just downstairs in one of our studios. So check that out as well if you like what you hear today. Jeff is in San Bernardino, California. Jeff, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good. Um, so I had a quick question about I'm, I'm finally you know taking your advice. I sat down with my wife and we're paying everything off now. Yay. Um, good job, Jeff. Yeah, Congratulations. Um, so. Um, the, except that we're like way too much into that right now, <laughs> but, um, uh, right now my credit card, I should be having paid off in the next one year. Right. So, um, we had bought a truck, but unfortunately that thing's a lemon and we're going through that whole thing. And I'm hoping to get rid of that by the end of next year. And then I had to pull out, out of my, you know, uh, retirement account money to buy my wife a new car because the other one's just not safe to drive. So we're now paying um, uh, the credit card first because that's the highest highest payment or the highest uh, interest rate. So What's the balance on that? That thing, that thing is 30000 Okay. And what other debt do you have? Um, I have the truck, which is uh, 24000 and that's the lemon. Okay. And then we have my wife's car, which is at forty three thousand. Goodness and gracious! Wait, forty three thousand dollars for your wife's car, but you took money out of your four hundred one k. You said. Yeah, so it, we bought it new because only because I know I'm going to get rid of the truck, and I should be getting the money back from that truck. Whatever money I get from you that you just truck, said it's a I'm lemon. How are you going to get the money back? So the truck I bought my wife. My the truck is still sitting in my driveway. How much can you sell driven. the truck for? Um. Well, I'm, I got a lawyer already, and they're going to try to give me pretty much what I paid for it. There's a lot and, of try and maybe, and you sound very confident this is all just going to happen. I'm hoping. <laughs> what if the truck is worth nothing because it's a lemon? Um, well, it's it's still brand, it's brand new, and it only has like 30,000 miles, and it's still under warranty. Okay. It's it's only it's only a, a year and a half old. Okay. So it's still under warranty. And I I fixed the transmission like four times already. Yes. And there's a whole bunch well, of Well, hey, great lesson it. for those of you out there who are going, I'm going to get a new car because it's so reliable. <laughs> not always. Yeah. Look at yeah, our friend Jeff. Yeah, Look at our friend Jeff. So you got Jeff. credit card and two car loans. What else? Um, that's it. Okay. That's it. And then the house. How much now. do you guys make a year, Jeff? Um, after after taxes, uh, we take home about uh, 150 and if I do overtime, we could get up to probably maybe 180 to 200. Okay. okay. And why is it going to take you a year to pay off 30,000 in credit card debt when you net 150? Um, pretty much because uh, the the two car payments are killing me. And what could you sell your um, wife's what your wife's car, Jeff? Forty three thousand dollars. How much could you sell it for? 
um, probably pretty close to the same. It, it, it was also brand new at the Honda Accord, but we were planning on keeping that thing till it completely dies. So well, it, have, that would that would be a plan. If it's going to take you a year to it. pay off your credit card debt, we got to get rid of stuff. Okay. You just told me the car payment's killing you. So this plan of using yeah, this car two, forever. The two, just the two car payments. Like when I only had the car payment for the truck, I was okay. But now I'm paying for the truck and paying for her car. And then my car is 11 years old and it has 300,000 miles on it. And I'm afraid it may not last another two years. Right. Um, but I'm going to drive it until it's going to be too expensive to fix it. Yeah. Okay. So what's um, your question today? When, so pretty much when I get the credit card paid off and I'm then paying down my wife's car, I'm afraid my car's not going to make it right. And I have a decent interest payment, which is 5% for her car. And if I have to end up getting another car for me, should I put some money aside while I'm paying off my wife's car in case I do have to buy a new car and I, it's a higher interest because interest rates are going crazy high right now. So should I then save money and, and buy an, uh, buy another car cash and yes. just not put as much money towards my wife's car? And it's going to be a everything? used car. Yep. Yes. No yep. more new cars, no more loans, no, no yep. more even thinking not about even, interest not rates. Not even if I drive it to all, not, not even, even No, Jeff. Jeff. No, because okay. you know what? Because okay. you know what you're doing? Yeah, because that car payment that you're paying, you're paying interest on top of that versus if you in- invested that car payment, you would have... What was it like two point two million dollars or something? I mean, millions of dollars. So it's okay. it's mathematically Jeff. it's a depreciating asset. It's not worth it. No, always okay. cash for cars. Always cash. cash I, for I am rooting for Jeff more than anything. But what I'm hearing a lot of right now, if I was your friend, I'd be like, Jeff, you have justified your way into every financial mistake. Everything okay. is well. Here's what was I was gonna do, and what if I what I what if I just uh, okay. drove it? For, I think we need to just. Cut yeah. all that. Let's start from scratch and go, hey, okay. clean slate. We need to get rid of okay. these cars. Yeah, and the good thing is, Jeff, you guys, I mean, because you will be working overtime. So I'm going to just have a little dream session. Let's say you're Ooh. making 200000 You're bringing home 200 I think is what I heard you, you br- right? You said you could bring home well, 180 like now. Yeah, that's like if I never see the kid though and all that. So Hold on. See, that feels like also aggressive, okay. Jeff. Okay. <laughs> one, let's just say 180 for fun. Okay, so you already have a car. You have a truck sitting in the driveway that's a lemon. You think you can sell it. For twenty four, you think you'll just that you have a you have a loan well, for twenty four. Yeah, you think I'm you'll thinking, be able to just I, go be even, right? So I guess I guess uh, the the manufacturer already said they would give us like I think it was forty thousand. Um, my lawyer saying like seventy thousand, so it was fifty five thousand. So you're telling me you're going to get cut a check for potentially seventy thousand dollars. Um, my guess is probably 55. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be, but this could be a year from now. We don't know when this is going to actually happen. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. So we don't want to, I don't want to bank on that. That's let's call that gravy money later on down the line. But right now don't make all your plans based on waiting on this check. Yeah. And I'm not, that's why I'm still just having it sit in the driveway and just doing the payments. But we can't sell it until it's fixed. Um, until I figure out if, you know, the company's going to buy it back, which it sounds like they're going to. But it's just. How but in the meantime, you're making a payment on a car sitting in the driveway. Yeah, exactly. That, that scares me. Yeah. What's so if that? this, I yeah, mean, Jeff, we can, if like I, I said, we can we can kind of afford it, but you know, it's it's just. Jeff, you know what that was? That was another justification. Ding, we need a little ding every time you do one of those. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I mean, and, and I wouldn't sit around waiting on them to do something. If nothing has happened by January, I'm on my own. I'm selling the truck. I I'm, I don't care what the... I, I can't be paying on something that is just sitting there. So, no, I would, yeah. be, I would be out on that. I would cut lifestyle down, Jeff. I would cut up those credit cards. And you guys attack that credit card debt. But you make great income, work extra for a year of your life. Go crazy. And you guys can have this cleaned up. Hey, Jeff, hang on the line. We're going to send you Financial Peace University. Since you're new to this stuff, it's going to lay it all out beautifully so that you can get on a plan, ditch debt, and build wealth.
This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz. Our question of the day is sponsored by Neighborly, your hub for home services. With the Neighborly app, you have fast, easy access to any home service you need from experts you can trust near you. Download the Neighborly app today to find and schedule service with any of Neighborly's locally owned and operated service providers. All right, today's question is a good one from Sam in Utah. My wife wants to buy a $1,500 stroller for our baby to be born next year. I think it's unreasonable and stupid to spend that much money. That to spend so much money on it. We are debt free, including the house, with a household income of three hundred thousand dollars. She makes about half of our income, and she thinks she has a right to spend fifteen hundred dollars on a baby after four years of infertility treatments. Am I off base? Whoa, that was a loaded question, Rachel. Okay, so uh, does she have the right to spend? Like the all language. Of that language, we're not. We're, let's remove that just for the fun of this. Even if she was a stay-at-home spouse and made zero dollars. I don't like this language of like, well, does she has no right because she doesn't make this or she makes this. Yeah, it's not That's about... It's just weird. Yeah, she uh, she has a right because she's part of the partnership of marriage that you guys are in. So she has a right to voice her opinion and all of that, right? Just like he would. Um, yeah, you guys are debt-free, including the house, making $300,000. I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes. And let's... Be clear why, Rachel, because uh, this is an interesting conversation. It goes beyond strollers. This people is probably get mad at life. me for saying that. Yeah. When people say, I think it's stupid and unreasonable to spend that much money on a blank, on a car, on a house. And the, what we always go back to is, are you doing it with cash and are you doing it for the right reasons or are you doing it with debt to impress people? Right. And this is not one of those situations. They follow the baby steps. They make $300,000. Now, she probably looks at him and goes, you're going to buy a circular saw from Lowe's for $1,200? <laughs> That's stupid and unreasonable. And he's going, well, honey, I'm going to, instead of paying for this project or renting it. And she's going, I'm going to be walking around town with the baby. I want a nice stroller to do that with. Yes, yes. I know. And, and it is, out of all the baby equipment, your car seat, stroller, you know, there's a couple of these things that they get the wear and tear. You use them a lot. So if you have the money to get a nice one that you love... Get the nice one. And George, right in front of me, I happened to see something. This is a special treat. We did not plan this. But this it was not planned. My wife and my newborn baby are in the lobby right now. And we have a very expensive stroller on display that we maybe had a minimal fight over. What do you mean this wasn't planned? I picked this for today because you were on and just had a baby. It was wow. totally planned. Yeah, but I didn't know they're, that they're my be wife was going to visit. With the stroller. She's just never the on top. watched me do that the show. That was the cherry on top. Um, are we able to get a yeah, shot? Yeah, I think we're going to try to get a so shot of Deanna's the stroller. Deanna's holding Mia. Will she be able to be in the She's shot? She's on our team. So That's Deanna, not my, there's my wife, Whitney, in the white, and then Deanna's in the... Is Deanna's holding the baby. She's holding the baby. Holding Mia. And but then, let's look and at the stroller. Get, get that stroller this in there. This feels like Price is Right. We're get showing off the stroller. Get that stroller in there. Go. Can we turn the... Can- yeah, can- there we go. Okay, oh, wait, so... Wait, wait, We didn't see it. Do it again. One more there time. There we go. One more time. There's the yeah, stroller. Yeah, there so it is. This is an up a baby Vista V2 stroller that Rachel and I talked about. And I had qualms with this, Rachel. Yes, you did. And we use, you know, gifts from family money and all and a part of our own money to buy this very expensive stroller. It was not $1,500, but it's an expensive stroller. Yeah. But we've also worked really hard and we've followed the baby steps. We don't have any debt and we budgeted for this thing. And let me tell you, when we're walking that baby around the neighborhood, Whit- Whitney is like, I, I feel like this is the Rolls Royce of strollers. Like she enjoys walking. It's so smooth. And, you know, it's worth it and for And it's her. worth it. As a new mom who's got enough going on, get yep. the stroller, guys. Yeah, you don't. the guys don't understand. And so no, I'm trying to grapple have, with it. If you have credit card debt and student loans to pay, and, I mean, you can fill in the blank, right? Lots of other different situations. It may not, it probably wouldn't be wise for you to do that. Your money would be better off put towards other things like debt and all that. Um, but being debt free, having the cash to do it, having a, having a great income, yes, it's fine. It's fine. It's not like it's an unreasonable portion of their world. If right. they were going to buy a three hundred thousand dollar car and they made three hundred thousand dollars, I'd say let's pump the brakes. Yeah, literally. we need to think <laughs> literally. And Apple Baby has a great braking system, doesn't it? There you go. Little this click, not click. not hashtag not sponsored, but it is known as like the bougie stroller. It's a great stroller, and we had one. And y'all, we have all three kids now because it has the adjustable. You put the toddler seat, the rumble seat in the front, and then you get the little kick down thing for the little one. All of it. That thing went with us for six plus years. Yeah. And it was great. There you go. So there you go. Because listen, y'all, we talk so much on this show about 
sacrificing your lifestyle to get out of debt because that's normally what people call in for that they're deeply in debt and they're like we want to get out and it requires sacrifice so we're the people that are always like don't go out to eat don't go shopping you've got to pay this debt off that's the show and when we get a question like this we celebrate especially when Rachel's like, on you can do it yes this is when you can spend you live like no one else so later you can live and give like no one else and those of you on baby steps four five six seven enjoy that that your money too at that point, especially you all in baby step seven. Still, people are like, "Oh, I feel like I still feel like I have the rice and beans mentality. I can't, I can't. You know, it seems weird to spend, and it's hard for me to spend all of that. Enjoy your money when you've worked that hard to get to that place. You're free from that. Like you can enjoy it. So you want to be always giving, always saving, and always spending wisely. And yep. So Sam, you sorry. lose this one, buddy. You lose. We have. I don't We're have a ton of empathy team. here. We're on your wife's but to, team. to be fair, I was Sam at the beginning when we were starting to like add things to the registry and it was well, getting sure, overwhelming. It feels crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Because and again, I don't know what strollers cost these days. Yeah. And you can get it cheap. I mean, and those of you that are in debt and you're having a baby, you can get fine strollers that are way less expensive and they and they're going to be OK. And you know but, what, Sam, if you want to split the difference, go to Facebook Marketplace and get a used one for 800 bucks instead of 1500 if that's the compromise that you guys want to make. But whatever it is, you have to agree on it. As a couple. That's yep. important. That's right. All right. Let's move on to the phones. Corey is in Wichita, Kansas. Corey, welcome to the show. Hey, Rachel. Hey, George. Hey. So I got a question for you. I've got uh, 30000 in a CD. I'm saving that for my three-year-old daughter, her future. Uh, would it be smart to take it out right now and uh, put it towards my house and get it paid off in a year and a half? Or should I just save that money? What happens if you future, don't touch that money and you just pay off the house with future income? How much longer would it take? Uh, another half a year. Okay. So we're, we're arguing about six months here yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. And is this all the money you have saved for her college? Yes. Okay. No 529s, no ESAs, anything like that? Not yet. I just recently started listening to you guys and we've got everything paid off but the house. And uh, I'm just not sure. I, I would like to be just completely debt free, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Corey, you can do you can do both. I mean, like George said, yeah. I mean, even just say you took this money, paid off the house, then that frees up a ton of income for you to go and you know open up another savings account or a 529 plan and uh, and invest. And she's going to be fine. She's three years old, so she's. I mean, if she was 18, this would be another discussion. But there's plenty of time for you to oh, save. Yeah. Or on the flip side too, Corey, if you didn't touch it and you paid off the house in six months longer, great. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of a either way you're going to be fine. So um, I, I almost would be tempted just to pay off the house, honestly. I know. Well, I have an idea that could split the difference. What if you okay. took, you know, when does the CD mature? We well, can take it out without any interest penalties. Uh, March 2024. Okay. So oh, okay. Let's say in March, which one reason why I don't love CDs, but in March of 2024, what if you took five or 10 grand and put that into a 529 plan and then use 20 grand towards the house? Okay. And here's what that does for you. idea. Then you're invested in the stock market. And so that $10,000 that you put in there could grow to 60 or 70 by the time she's 18. But also, okay. you're feeling a little bit of progress on this house, and you know you'll pay it off in a year and seven months, or eight months. And so, uh, I think it's splitting hairs. But when I we look at the baby steps, four, five, six, are you already investing fifteen percent of your own for retirement? So that's where I get a little confused. So I'm 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 doing six percent. My wife's doing eight percent. So we're at fourteen right now. I'm going to do another percent. To no, because when you double the people, hurt? you need double the money. So you both need to do fifteen okay. percent of each of your incomes to get to fifteen percent of household income. I would focus on that first. Get your own mask on now. Then let's put a little bit away for college each year. Might be a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. Any money beyond that, let's start throwing at the house. And that'll knock you out of this analysis paralysis. Thanks so much for the call, man. Doing this great, Corey. Is the Ramsey Show.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz this hour. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Crystal joins us up next in Hartford, Connecticut. Crystal, what's going on? Yes. Hello. Hey. How are you guys? So good. How can we help you today? Well, I've had my I've had it moment. Um, and I am writing everything down, figuring out where to go from here. My biggest concern is with everything that I've figured out, it's going to take me more than three years to clean up my uh, consumer debt. Okay. And I'm just worried being 46 years old and having no retirement up to this point, pausing, um, my uh, 401k with my company that I'm at currently. Okay. What's um, in your 401k now? I only have about $4,000. Okay. And it's it's just been a series of really bad financial decisions with other 401ks that I had. Like I've changed careers a couple of times and I've just cashed them out. Oh, no. And used yeah, and use them to for like, everyday expenses, living expenses as I was transitioning into these new careers. Like I've made two major career changes. Um and that's why I'm a little nervous on pausing uh the four oh one K. Well here's here's some good news. If you pause, you can't yeah. rob a, a cookie jar that has no cookies in it. Right. So there's one behavior right. change, which I think is what the reason you're calling in today is because you're like, listen, I've been living like this for years, maybe decades, and it's time. And so that means you're going to have to do some radical things that make you uncomfortable just for a season right. to get this debt cleaned up. So how much debt do you have? I have, um, well, the big big one is student loans that I'm not even using the education that I got, you know, so. That's the I American think, story. I've, yeah, I have sixty six thousand dollars in student loans. Okay. That I've been paying since two thousand on. Oh my gosh! Twenty three years. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly, and, and it, I'm I guessing the balance was, has grown. I'm sure the original balance has grown from from when I've gotten out, and I think I applied for the income based repayment plan in maybe two thousand and three or four, I want to say, and it hasn't made a dent. I don't believe their lies anymore that it's going to be forgiven after you make certain number of qualified payments. You know, it's, it's just a big... Well, starting today, you're going to believe in me. Crystal instead of some right. government plan. That's so right. what's your other debt? That's day? right. Um, I did a big old debt consolidation personal loan of 36000 but it didn't, that was like, I didn't change my spending habits after I did that. That's yep. the problem so with then, consolidation. Yep, exactly. It makes you feel like you did something and then you keep Don't living your life. Don't change the behavior. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's like. And We're I'm up over really, 100000 now in debt. What else do you have? Um, I have a car that's worth seventeen, but I don't. Make the payments on it. It's just in my name. Who makes, makes the make payments? Sense? My brother. And he's okay with he, this? He, Is he helping you out? Yeah. No, no. It, he's driving it. He just has way worse credit than me. So you owe, yeah. So you have a car loan. Under, I have a car loan. And how much is and that? How, it. Yeah. So what's, how much uh, is that for? 16000 Okay. And um, I'm about... 3000 in credit cards. Not really much in credit cards currently because I whacked out about on my debt snowball about $3,000 already. Good for you. Um, That's awesome. great. And what's your yeah. income? So I looked to back uh, last year um, and it's like 68000 as a truck driver. Okay. Uh, take home. Take home pay. Okay. So you probably made closer to ninety. Uh, Gross. yeah, probably a little bit under. Okay. Um, cause we, we get a tax credit because we're, we're basically living in a mo moving house. So we're allowed to take a per diem credit Got for it. every day we're out on the road. Okay. Um, and that's, is this all so the debt? That, Was there anything we didn't cover? No, but I mean, I, and I cash flow, I cash, if I can hear my dog, I cash flow vet appointments. 
Oh, so every okay. time I have a vet appointment, I stop and I cash flow that. Okay. Now. Woo! Crystal, we are in a pickle here. Yeah. We make 68K yeah. and we have, what, $125,000 in consumer debt. Yep. Right. And that's what my concern was because it's, from what I can see, like, where, where I've gotten my extra payments is I've got it to where I'm contributing at, uh, roughly between 700 extra a month to the debt and 1000 okay. extra a month. And is this while yeah. you paused investing or have you not done that yet? I have not paused my investing. Okay. How, how much like would be in your pay, in pay? How much would be in your paycheck extra if you did that? Do you know? Well, anywhere from on a bad week about ninety dollars to upwards of uh, one hundred and fifty a week. That's per if paycheck. I didn't contribute anything per week. So. Okay, Sorry. so we're talking yeah. hundreds of yeah. extra dollars you can throw at this debt. Yeah, I know. yeah. I, know. I mean, it's four, just that four, paralysis five, here, six. Like. Yeah. So, Crystal, I think here's the here's the thing. If you mm-hmm. number one, you still have time. Okay, you're not mm-hmm. 65 years old. There's catch up contributions you can do um, later down the road. But what I would say to you right now is, I would rather not have consumer debt be debt free mm-hmm. and then catching up with my retirement than having mm-hmm. money in a four oh one K that I can't touch right now, but I'm drowning in hundred and twenty five thousand right. dollars in debt. And so what right. you have to realize, Crystal, and you have realized because I've heard this on the call, which I think is so great, is is you know, you have to be able to say, okay, what I've been doing isn't working. So now I have to try a completely new plan. So the plan that we're yeah. gonna talk about has helped literally millions of people do this. And it's a plan yeah. with specific steps in a specific order for a specific reason. Because being able right. to wipe out this consumer debt, taking everything possible, right? Because I mean, you're scattered all over the place with some stuff. And so bringing everything in, actually getting traction for the first time in your life, Crystal, like you're going to yeah. start to feel it. You're going to actually start to feel you winning, not through debt consolidation, right. not through a loan that's sitting there. You're wondering about repayment plans. I mean, none of that. Crystal's going to be doing yeah, it and, and you getting and motivated think, to do that. And then and I Crystal- I heard you talk about like the different classrooms that you grew up in and stuff like that. And yeah. my family all has always been a paycheck to paycheck family. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And yeah. I just don't think I've ever learned how to break- that's right. The habit yep. of this. Like, so I, I know George has talked about don't tie your money up in CDs. Well, as I'm going along, I'm having CDs that are maturing and I'm just immediately cashing them out and paying. Good on for you as well. Yeah. How much do you have so saved? How much are in that? How much do you have saved? I just did one for a thousand dollars. So I cashed it out. I put that good for you towards. Uh, the vet, the most recent vet bill, which I it's the cash flow thing that. So the next one, there's three of them that are going to be maturing at the end of November. That'll be three thousand dollars. Okay, great. That's so great. here's the deal, Crystal. Quit playing with these mm-hmm. CDs. It's not helping you mm-hmm. get out of debt. So here's what you need to do: put a thousand bucks aside in a savings account. And don't play with these accounts anymore. The rest of the money needs to go towards knocking out this debt. And you said three years, which mm-hmm. tells me you can throw forty thousand dollars a year at your consumer debt. You'll knock out all one twenty five in three years. Right. Yeah. That's okay. how I got it planned out. It's is, awesome. Is I should be debt free in three years. That's a great goal. And anything you can do to get your completely. income up and your expenses down is going to speed up that process. So my goal for you would be, how do we get even more aggressive and do this in two years, two yeah. and a half years? And hold on the line, Crystal, because I'm going to set you up with Financial Peace University, which is our which is our seven or nine week course, uh, nine lesson course, which will help you get all the basics and every dollar premium. I want you to do that too. And we have a webinar actually. Uh, if you guys go to everydollar.com slash budgeting to check out webinars that we're doing to walk through the budgeting process. So Crystal, hang on the line. I'll get you those two things to start this because you're on the cusp of change and it's going to be uncomfortable. But man, Crystal in four years is going to be a completely different person financially.
This is the Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day, Jeremiah 17, 7. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Corey Ten Boom said, hold everything in your hands lightly. Otherwise, it hurts when God pries your fingers open. Hmm, that's Ooh. a good one. Corey Ten Boom, she's incredible. Uh, the Is it the, the Hiding Place? Have you read that? Oh, back in the day. Oh, Throwback. great, great book. Um, a great II, generosity real, quote. Real um, true, or true story. Yeah. Back, um, yeah, Corey Ten Boom. Hmm. Love that quote, though. So good. Yeah. You should steal that one, Rachel. Not steal, but give with credit. I should. I whenever should. you're talking about generosity. Yep. It's a great good. way to look at it. All right. Let's get to the phones. Julie is in Vancouver, British Columbia, all the way. Let's go, Julie. What's going on? Um, hi there. I've had a, a bit of a rough go lately, and I'm trying to look for some advice on uh, on the next steps forward. Okay. What's been uh, going on? I have. Um. I have two small kids, and unexpectedly, um, my husband decided to exit uh, the situation um, oh, back in wow. July. Oh, oh, my gosh, Julie. I'm he, so sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, things happen. Um, anyways, uh, you know, he left the country, so I won't be getting any child support. And I did manage wow, what to get a gym. myself. Yeah. Uh, very unexpected. Not not who I knew before. It was quick. Um, and... I, I was able to get the condo that we have um, put under me, my parents. So I, I have that, but I'm just facing a challenge in terms of what to decide to do because um, the costs of it are, to me, I'm, I'm pretty good budgeting, far exceed what I should be paying and what I can yeah. pay. But at the same time, rents aren't a lot different in my region. Yeah. And so I just, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get some <laughs> advice on what I should do here. Do you, do you have family in the area? No. No. Okay. Um, how much are you, are you, are you working? Yeah. Okay. Um, and how much are you bringing in yeah. a month? Uh, about 4,600. Okay. How much is the rent right now? The mortgage is 2,550 a month and an HO of 420. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's two thirds of your yeah, this money is just disappearing. Long time. Um, and in the area, Julie, have you have you looked at other options? Have you looked around to see what else is out there? Yeah, I, I've I've certainly I've I've uh, I've looked at rents, and uh, if you're real lucky, you might get a very rough looking basement apartment for about twenty two hundred, twenty four hundred, and that's okay. that's something I don't really I love to put my kids in. Yeah. Um, that and there's also I, I'm, the reason I wanted to buy initially was because there's a lot of rent evictions that happen around here where the landlords, you know, they can find a reason to evict people to mm. to up the rent. Okay. Um, and so that happens a lot, especially to. Um, what do you do for a job, Julie? What's your what are you what are you doing? I'm a program coordinator, um, and I, I work for a really great spot right now, and that's part of why I stay here and, and, um, yeah, they allow me a lot of flexibility when I'm with two small kids. Like, um, I didn't get my, my younger one into daycare until she was two. Okay. Um, because I worked with her the first year, you know, right now yeah. I gotta be able to k pick up my kids from school. I gotta have them home if they're sick. And so the level of flexibility I have to do that is, uh, sure. Worth sure. Weight in gold, really. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Are I the prospects that. of getting this guy legally to pay anything, mm -hmm. is that out of the picture now? Yeah, he's in a place that you can't you can't get him. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, his country, his country doesn't have any uh, any treaties or anything like that, really. So. But I just still wonder if there are you know laws in Canada that would require him mm -hmm. to pay. Yeah, I can I can take it through to get it put against like if he ever came back, but not not they can't actually obtain it in any way. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, Julie. I I know. You know, Canadian housing is crazy, both rent and mortgages and home buying. But I do wonder how long you're going to be able to sustain paying this mortgage payment if you continue making the same amount of income. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm faced with. And, and that's my, my how much fear, equity do you have? The insecurity. If you sold this place, uh, what would you walk away with? Uh, maybe 600K, and I owe 430. Okay. Okay, so okay. So you're saying it would you would sell it for 600K? Yeah. Okay. So you'd have about 200,000 in equity? 
Yeah, just under. And the 150 after fees and all that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I think month to month, Julie, because all of this is so new. There's so much um, stress that you're feeling. I would want, I, need, I would need my income freed up to have a level of peace. And that's not going to happen in the current situation. Um, I mean, because it's more than half your, your, your paycheck. I mean, almost three fourths. So, um, Julie, I would sell it. I would, um, I would sell it and I would, unless you can see your income going up, that's the only other factor that would change, but I would sell it. I would rent somewhere for a year. You, you have that equity and just to kind of get your, your bearings again. Um, Mm -hmm. but there's also that hard reality, Julie, too, of, you know, what what the job you have, which has great flexibility, which is such a gift, but what you make and the city you live in, you know, we talk to people in LA or, uh, you know, San Francisco area, you know, these places that are so high in cost of living and they're, and what they make you, you can't, you can't make the math work. And so, um, I don't want you to make that decision right now because that's a bigger decision um, of changing jobs or moving or, you know, that would have to be a decision you'll that you eventually will have to face. But I don't want you to face that right now in the middle of everything you've just walked through. But I think one decision you could make that's going to just free you up some for me is is selling. Yeah, especially because your life circumstances have drastically changed. And now that you're a single income household, a single mom, your needs have changed and your income's changed. And we have to face, you know, as John Deloney would say, choose reality. And the reality is life is different. This is really hard. And not having this mortgage over your head will at least free you up and keep you more nimble as you take that next step. Man, I've talked to you only for like three minutes, Julie, and my anger towards him, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine how you're feeling. But do you, do you have good community around you? Do you have a support system, friends or family? Uh, not a big one locally. Um, no, but I'm- Where's I'm your family? Good. I work in mental health, thankfully. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm keeping my head on pretty straight. Um, yeah. It's, it's more just that, that reality of, of my kids, you know, and what they'll have to- Oh yeah. In terms of you know the the life experience um, is really unfortunate. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, And so yeah, you're in mental health, so you know. But I'm like, I just even from that side of it. um, I wish I could just snap my fingers and make this all fixed. I know, but but the healing process and it's a journey. Um, And Julie, you're courageous, and you can, and you can do this. Your your kids are so lucky to have you. You're a really good mom. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah, you know, just pull, to keep pulling it out. It's I think I think what what really holds me is I, I'm pretty good at logic and and the numbers don't lie. It's just that level of insecurity, you know. Like I know the reason I want to buy in the first place for that safety that no one can kick me out. Yep, mm. absolutely okay, right. But that maybe is the reality too. So right, yep, and that makes so much sense. I mean, grasping for anything of control or predictability right now feels so safe and so great I, I would imagine right so yeah. so I understand that that even saying to sell it and finding somewhere cheaper that that kind of uproots even more of that chaotic feeling and so I do think once you get in a rhythm of somewhere new and actually having some margin financially to go and buy it you, mm-hmm. I think eventually you will buy another place truly right like this isn't just a you'll never buy something else uh, but it's going to be within reason and it's going to be a, a blessing to you, and yeah, it's not going to... This is about the cheapest in my city. <laughs> wow. 1979, uh, you know, a little condo. Sure. Um, Do you have you any know, debt, Julie, days. other than the mortgage? No, no. And you I have an emergency fund? A small one. Okay. Working on it. That's going to also give you some security and peace as you step into that next phase. But, man, we are heartbroken for you, Julie. And uh, like Rachel said, you're a warrior. And we know you're going to come out of this on the other side. But right now, you're in the real crappy part where you're left to pick up the pieces. Mm. Ugh. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to my co-host, Rachel Cruz, all the folks in the booth keeping the show afloat, and you, America. Until next time, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. 